What's up, everybody? Welcome to Open Bike Night Live, presenting last, <laughs> I almost said last comic standing. Welcome to Open Bike Night Live, last comic streaming. I'm your host, producer John T. Bolds, here tonight with everybody hanging out in the audience and with my fantastic co-hosts. First up, from the Sudden But Inevitable podcast, we have Jesse. Hey there, John. I've got enough puns with me tonight to fill up a jar, John. All right. And <laughs> here, fresh off his want his first viewing of <clears throat> Deep Space Nine Emissary Episode One, while also still watching for the first time Star Trek TNG, host of Green Chirp, a newbie track to TNG, Cameron. That's all accurate. Yes, I've got my uh, conveniently placed groin shadow in place and I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, hey, we uh, appreciate everybody being here tonight. And we're here to talk about the four part comic series, The Illyrian Enigma, um, which is a bridge between seasons one and two of Strange New Worlds. First off, though, I want to thank all of our patrons especially our 25 minute set patrons shatterhand pam steve and mark um they get a shout out every time every episode every show we do and all of our other patrons of course are amazing the the support we're getting from our listeners from our patrons is just fantastic and i want to make sure they all know how much we appreciate it um anybody watching or listening who hasn't signed up to be a patron and is interested in supporting independent star trek podcasting you're welcome to head on over to uh, op- patreon.com slash open pike or just go to openpike.com and check it out the first 50 patrons will be entered to win a kiss the quaff open pike night original apron that has been autographed by captain pike and spock anson mount and ethan peck their hands have touched the apron we will be giving away all four so, of them? So, uh, was that, Kim? All four of them? Yes, all, all four, four of them. Yeah. The yeah. two all fictional characters hands. and the two actors? Yes, so all eight <laughs> hands, yeah. I'm, I'm it was excited. They, they were switching back and forth seamlessly. The, uh, the acting skills on those two guys was fantastic. And the hair. The hair was fantastic, of course. Chest so. and head. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. They're, uh, Hi, Kelly. There's yeah. a whole story I was going to say. <laughs> it's a good thing you brought up the chest hair story because Kelly is here live with us in the chat. Yeah. Uh, Kelly, we we don't, I mean, we can't say that they didn't leave DNA on the apron. I mean, they did touch it, right? I don't know how swabbing works personally. <laughs> but outside of the Illyrian Enigma four-issue comic series that we are here to discuss because we are the Strange New Worlds podcast where your personal logs are the prime directive. There have been some fairly large-ish announcements in the Trek world yes, today there specifically. Have. Yeah. <laughs> so we figured we should probably mention those as well. There is some seriously huge news. Who wants to say it? Cameron, right, do you want to say Take it away, it? Jesse. Yeah. Okay. You guys, I am eating my words because just yesterday on Twitter, I said, this series is not going to happen. I'll be very surprised if it does. And I will believe it when I am watching credits on the first episode. Almost as if to just put Crow directly in my face, Paramount today has announced that Star Trek Section 31 is a go. And Michelle Yeoh, Oscar winner Michelle Yeoh, is returning yep. as Captain Philippa Giorgio. Well, rather, Empress Philippa Giorgio. And the production is going to start later this year. So this is something that we could see within like 18 months, you guys? I mean, is that about an accurate... Yeah, I I'd say for, I'd yeah, say film. eighteen to twenty four months is probably a pretty safe bet. Uh, they're I... they need to you know strike while the iron is hot. Not that Michelle Yeoh is going to cool off anytime soon. <laughs> She's been you know a fantastic performer for decades now. But uh, yeah, their uh, Paramount is definitely not hopefully not still like pandemic speed on producing stuff. They're going to want to make use of all those uh, discovery sets before they tear them down permanently, too. Yes. And it sounds like there is a bit of a shift in the overall strategy with Star Trek, and it may include additional character-centric 
television style movies going forward. So you guys, I mean, like we can start it today. We can start it tomorrow. We can start it whenever we want, but we're going to have to start a campaign for the Ortegas movie, Mm -hmm. right? Because Mm -hmm. we're going to need something for that character and we're going to need something specific to that character because we know she doesn't end up in the original series continuity. Now, we here at Open Pike Night are nothing if not a little bit um, too dedicated to Star Trek, some folks might say. <laughs> um, so in that vein, we have gone ahead and put together a graphic and a name for the show that we will use to cover Star Trek Section 31. And that, of course, is The Empress Strikes Back, which is an Open Pike Night movie event, much as it is for Paramount+. Plus. I hope that those of you that are out there in the live chat or listening will join us for the Empress Strikes Back. I that's the only thing that I've ever submitted to the business group chat that didn't have to get workshopped. I was like, what about this? And Cameron went, yes. And it was <laughs> that was the whole process. So <laughs> please Absolutely. join us for yeah. the Empress Strikes Back. We're very, very excited for that. I am very excited. Whenever for that. or in whatever for form that occurs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Could be a while. <laughs> yeah, we got time. We we can yeah. uh we can workshop it some more but no emperor strikes Frack was a fantastic name it's like well there we go we got it (laughs) Mm -hmm. um we also have some other news uh the strange new world season one score is going to be available for listening everybody's listening pleasure on the 28th of this month i believe Mm -hmm. that's right so you know if you listen back to our interview with nami melamad she took us through some of those those musical cues and talked about her process of, of writing the score for season one and it is a great score so i look forward to how many finding it on people spotify listen, or wherever it is was that, that episode how many times can people listen to that episode before the score drops oh are you challenging uh, people it's 10 I days it was, it was about was it was an hour and a half so. yeah, yeah it was a solid hour and a half so, so i'll get like i'll get back to you on the math 200 yeah. times i i do feel it's our responsibility right now to say to everybody who is currently watching the live stream, are your taxes done? Oh, good point. <laughs> if your taxes aren't done, please go do your taxes while you leave this live stream on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have like three hours. We folks, make great so, yeah. background sound. Yes. Um, right. if, or so we've been told. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know because I only ever listen to us with the greatest of intent. And when I watch us, I make my entire family sit on the couch and they're not allowed to speak. So, you know, it's awful for them. (laughs) They just have to sit in stillness, too, for some reason, like like completely. IRS is going to go there. A whole group of people just sent us a bunch of 1701 forms. We don't even have a 1701 form. What's happening here? (laughs) We do not advocate sending fake forms to the irs but if you do do that make sure that it says form 1701 at the okay i'm just gonna say i live like five miles from the irs so let's not get me in too much trouble guys (laughs) too much engineer mark says no way that an engineer lags on that kind of thing i'm gonna guess engineer mark is one of those uh paid my taxes on january 2nd guys like uh ned flanders right like (laughs) i mean that's the way to be right like i'm just i've never been that on the ball personally i'd say if you've done by valentine's day that's about that's about the most realistic like really early bird you can be but all depends i've never gotten all my forms by the end of january so Yeah. yeah So over the next hour, we'll go over which forms are available when for filing your taxes. Oh, no, no, that's that's not what Come we're back, talking about tonight. <laughs> Audit Pike Night, welcome. <laughs> no, I mean, John is John is just fooling with you. We are actually specifically here to talk tonight about Star Trek Strange New Worlds, the Illyrian Enigma, which, of course, is the aforementioned four issue miniseries. I believe it's uh, from Dark Horse. I'm not 100 percent on that. Uh, I know. Let's take a look. We can double check that. Yes, um, yes. And it does feature a conveniently placed groin shadow, hence my opening. It's just for yes. so people didn't think I was pulling that out of nowhere. <laughs> Correct. And uh, thank you, John. Wears it was, it was not Dark shadow. Horse. It was IDW. Yeah. Um, and Cameron, I think the people that know our show know that you're going to find a way to fit a crotch in kind of yeah. no matter what, right? Yeah, it's true. So, all right. Now, there we ha- we did have a little bit of a discussion before the stream. Um, we don't know how spoilery the folks would like us to be with this sort of thing because 
a lot of reasons. So if you're out there in the live chat and you have a specific question, go ahead and toss it up now and we'll definitely answer it. If you yeah. are out there in the live chat and you have read these, maybe go ahead and put some of your favorite moments into the live chat and we'll go through those as we go. Uh, for starters, John, would you like to give us a quick synopsis of what the setup is here? Uh, yeah. So this is, uh, first off, this is the Illyrian Enigma. It's a four issue comic series uh, bridging seasons one and two of Strange New Worlds, telling us, giving us a little more background about where the Illyrians might have come from and what some of their origins are and and what currently other Illyrians besides Una, who's rotting away in a prison cell, I'm guessing, uh, are doing. So the comic was written by Kristen Beyer and Mike Johnson, art by Morgan Levins, colors by Charlie Kirchhoff, and letters by Neil Uyatake, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. If not, I apologize, but uh, they did a great job on the writing, art, coloring, and lettering of the comics. So uh, we we have all four issues we've we've all read them and had a chance to review them and enjoy them and yeah we are here to talk to folks about what it is the story that it tells and sort of its place in strange new worlds so Indeed. i will right away just say that for me as somebody who's like give me every scrap that i can have give me every little detail i'm like Oh, I'm super excited for these comics. And then we get the comics. And I'm like, this feels just like an episode to me. Maybe a really short episode, <laughs> or, you know, like half an episode. Exactly. Um, half an episode is ex is how I've yeah. been thinking of it. Yeah. But like, I'm the kind of person that's going to immediately be like, great. Yes. Give me that half episode. I'm here for this. You know me. I'm the eternal optimist when it comes to Star Trek. It's difficult for me to be. I don't want to say like objective because i don't know that objectivity comes into something like this where i've never written or drawn a comic before um but subjectively i know that i'm often quite effusive so i'll get out of the way that yes i did enjoy this <laughs> and um it's probably designed specifically for people like me who need every little scrap that they can get and want every little piece of the universe no matter how consequential that may or may not happen to be um that having been said I don't know how I, I, I don't want to say hardcore. I really don't like that term for fans, but like, I don't know how a fan that's not hardcore is, I don't know how much fun they're going to have with this four issue series. Yeah. Um, because it's obviously they can't do anything that's going to change the status quo of the show. Right. So there are some story constraints here. Um, you know me, I'm very forgiving of story constraints, sometimes even when I shouldn't be. I think in this instance, it's understandable. This definitely strikes me as something that is meant to catch your eye on a local comic book store shelf and you go, I didn't know there was a new Star Trek crew. I guess I will look at this. And then as you're reading it, go, oh, I wonder if the show is episodic and fun and, you know, kind of... uh uh what's the word I'm looking for? Bouncy like this. There's definitely a bouncy uh, pacing to the comic. So I think yeah. it's designed specifically to get somebody who isn't watching Star Trek to consider watching Star Trek. That's my guess. If that person is already a comic book fan, mm -hmm. because other than that, I don't know who this is aimed at. I don't know if it's aimed at the super hardcore fan, me. Yes. Right. But other mm -hmm. than me and some comic book guy, I'm not super sure who this is aimed at. What do you guys feel? I mean, I think I think that's who it's aimed at. I think you got it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'll 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 point out on the other end of the spectrum from Jesse. I will just say I'm not a huge comic or graphic novel fan. I, I never have been. There are exceptions. Watchmen is great. I've enjoyed some Hellboy. I mean, there's exceptions, but generally, I'm very picky about art style. I don't want it to be too stylistic or too boring. I want it somewhere in the middle. And it's not, they've always just kind of felt like reading. Um, uh, uh, storyboards. Storyboards. I'm just yeah. like, yeah, I just want to watch the movie version. Uh, I'm also not a huge fan of extended universe material. Uh, like Jesse said, it's kind of, it always has to walk this line of like, it can't really move the needle on the characters or the, the plot or the universe at all. So it's, I mean, the best ones are kind of just like these little kind of nugget side adventures that can be enjoyed on their own. You know, I'm thinking, right. um, well, and also, <laughs> and they need to, be something that like you can't see on TV or or film. Like the best 
books and comic tie-ins are things that like do things that you can't see otherwise or do things in a way you can't see otherwise i'm thinking of like uh oh is it death troopers is that the star wars one where you're like oh i am never going to see han solo and chewbacca fight zombies on the screen so i will take this book and enjoy the heck out of it because it's just like this fun kind of what if um so yeah for me this this comic was like yeah we're going to kind of lead into season two episode one but we can't really because we don't want people to have to rely on reading it which thankfully i'm i I don't want to have to do homework to enjoy season two uh, so we're just going to kind of pull a, a discovery and just wipe the slate clean. Oh, no one can talk about the events at the end. And so it's, yeah, it does just feel a little, uh, oh, okay. Well, that's the thing that happened that doesn't matter, I guess. Right. And, and like you said, you know, like the high country, which I apologize to you guys, I need to get mailed out. That is a nice little side adventure that is its own episode, its own thing. We would, we could see on screen, but it's like, yeah, that they would never just do an episode or a movie of this. This is I I'm waiting to see until I see the first two episodes of Strange New Worlds. Like, is this episode season one, episode ten and a half? Is this season <laughs> two, episode point five or one point five? Because I have a feeling it's going to be one of those. Hmm. And it is I, I was thinking about it while we were while we were making our notes for this. Like Marvel can get away with making people do homework because they started assigning homework with Iron Man. They started mm-hmm assigning you know giving people post credit and mid credit scenes to dig into um early and often star trek can't get away with that and as when you, it's a lot easier when you start out as a written medium to transition to a vi- visual medium and make changes make things you know integrate changes that going to tv or movies did it's almost impossible to keep any kind of numbers you know the percentage of people who watch trek is way bigger than who watched strange new worlds. And that percentage is way bigger than whoever's going to actually read these, yeah. these comic books. And that's, they know that. So yeah, mm-hmm. the, it is, it's a fun little story, but ultimately it's not something people need to know before season two starts. And my, we'll catch up with the chat here in just one moment. I promise my only pushback gentlemen is going to be that, as a casual Marvel viewer, I'm kind of sick of having to watch everything. Like, and yep. I haven't. Yeah, recently. I think people are like, starting I, to get that way. Yeah, I don't. I don't have time, and I and I beyond that, I don't want to have that time. Right? Like, I don't. I don't want to tell my wife like, "Hey, let's go watch these four TV shows so we can watch this one movie." Like, I'd <laughs> yeah. rather just go see the movie with an actor that we both like in it. And I. I really do, to your point, that is one thing that I really appreciate about this. It's fun for me, the crazy fan, but there is no, like, there's nothing about it that if you don't see this, you're going to be missing in Strange New World Season 2. So, But my quickly, point then is just make it its own thing. Don't connect it to at all. Right. Like, don't, right. Don't connect exactly. it in the tape. Yeah. Ah, but never and, mind. And we're yeah. about to address that. So first, uh, Peter makes a great point here. One of his favorite moments, oh, one of his favorite moments when the comics were the flashbacks to the Illyrian homeworld in the past. I really love that. I love that the old uh, pre whatever their version of the Prime Directive Vulcans are. I'd say just pre Surak. Surak. They yeah. they ride Salots <laughs> down their first contact ramp. That's real subtle. Like wow. I thought is that, that a was... reference? Do we do we see the saber tooth? Oh, it's from Mounts TAS. ever before. Is it? Yeah, oh, it's okay. from the animated series. And nice. Spock actually references it in Strange New Worlds. He says, "I had a," or maybe that was Short Treks. I think it was Strange New Worlds. But he mentions having had a pet when he was a child. Hmm. Um, hmm. Peter says also the comic making the connection with the Enterprise episode Damage, which introduced yep. the Illyrians. Yes, I believe that was the, the look of the Illyrians, and this is derived from those Illyrians, if I'm not hmm. mistaken. Yes, yes. It um, is. Kelly says she thinks that this is aimed at getting the attention of Star Trek fans who may not be aware of a new series or fans who That's can't afford point. Paramount Plus. Now, to that point, when we were at Fan Expo Portland 2023, go listen to our episode. It's called Season Two Theories and Queries. We were walking around the convention floor to and finding people in Star Trek uniforms and going, Hey, do you do you like Strange New Worlds? And they were going, What? I haven't I haven't heard of that. And we're like, yeah. You're wearing a Star Trek uniform and you haven't heard <laughs> of that. So it there those people are there. Like that happened to us more than once and it kind of surprised us. Um, I really like this point from Mark in the chat. It's a slice of life, it's a category that can be its own kind of thing without moving the needle. That's very popular in anime and, and manga. Uh so I think it fits well here in the comic and I'm going to agree with that. Like one of my favorite episodes ever is data's day, even though it has no stakes, like that's, that's kind of what I like about it. So that's definitely something that I like here. 
Um, coincidentally, yeah, Mark Mike has started there, reading the Star mistakes. Trek comics, just, so that's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> yes. So I point being, I think that there there is definitely a small niche. This is the point we've all made. I think mm-hmm. is that there's a small niche of people that this is directly aimed at. But I bet you it works on those people really well because it worked on me pretty well. And I I went into it kind of not expecting anything because I was, I mean, I've read, you know, tie-in comics for a show that's based on production art before. Like, I really liked the Star Trek Doctor Who crossover comics. They were very creative, really liked the whole idea. It was definitely like the same eight production photos <laughs> you know, <laughs> with slightly different lighting every five panels. <laughs> so this did not suffer from that, which I really appreciated. I could tell who everybody was. There was no like fake uh, cinematic lighting. It was just a straight up comic book. I like the design of it. There were a few panels where I'm like, oh, I would love to have that like on my wall. Just like there's some really good Ortega's panels in here. Um, yeah. I Some guess great if I had ship, a complaint, just enterprise double page panels oh, yeah. too. Oh, Beautiful yeah. shots of the of everything space. is yeah. gorgeous. Uh, one one complaint that I would say that I have is maybe not enough of the not. I don't want to say not enough of the characters because it's a character centric story. But like they put uh, Laon and they put Hemmer on the cover, right? Yep. And there is a panel of Hemmer, but that's it. it like they're not. It's like John said, it's post episode ten, so there is no hammer to it's be had, <laughs> and Laan isn't there. So it's like we, you know, I get why they're on the cover, but as a nitpicky fan, I was like, why are they on the cover? They're not yeah. in the series. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, heck, what are the retailer incentive copies? I believe of issue three has Una sitting in the captain's chair talking to Pike. It's like, yeah, that's <laughs> not in. But that's that's you know covers. Literally with comics, you cannot judge a book by its cover right. almost more than any other type of book because, like, mm-hmm. yeah, they'll they'll put whatever they want on the cover. Nothing to do with what's inside. Well, and one of the variants to that point, and then I promise I'll be quiet for a moment, is they have the Captain Pike hair in Lower Deck style. And yeah. Like, I love that, but this is not a Lower Decks comic. Totally, that yeah. was way off. Of I, what, what was like, like, when, I confused, them, yeah. when I got them delivered, I was like, Oh, it's not they're they're just okay, a lot of ra- different random variants. I was expecting like other lower deck style stuff. No. Yeah. No. Not, so not there. <laughs> but I enjoy all the variant covers. I did they're all beautiful. Yeah, they like, are. They're, yeah. I have no complaints other than that I was like, this doesn't fit. Uh yeah. it's it's all Star Trek to me, so I <laughs> I, I was wondering I like... why they cast um Alan Ruck as as Captain Pike in this comic. Yeah, that was an interesting <laughs> casting choice. And on one of the covers, he looks very much like Jeffrey Hunter. Yes, <laughs> like <laughs> somebody was given the like draw Captain Pike assignment, and they went, "I don't want to. I want to draw. <laughs> I want to draw Jeffrey Hunter." It was like... This one was draw these characters. I yeah, like I at first I was like, they must not have had the rights to the actors' likenesses, and that must be a, a tough line to walk. Like draw the character without the actors, but some panels do look a lot like them. Yeah, but I'd, I'd say eighty percent of them do not look like them. But then there's a variant cover in of of issue four that is almost photographic art of Jess Bush's chapel, like it it is unmistakably Jess Bush's chapel. And because you so, could mistake her in the comic pages itself. Yeah. Well, I would That's say I mean not drawn great. I yeah. mean, in a comic book, as with as I mentioned before, as like with a manga or an anime, hairstyles do a lot of work. Right. They do. Like, oh, all the is... hairstyles are perfect. They they <laughs> right. that's what they were leaning on. And yeah. that's like yeah. which which character is this? Oh, that's Ortegas, right? That, mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. know, it's I don't think it's as bad as Cameron thinks it is, but <clears throat> to his point, I know <laughs> I exactly what he's talking about. Her. I'm yes. perfectly happy to admit that. <laughs> so I I the the comic is bookended nicely with a <clears throat> you know, we get a little bit of establishing storyline, but it's bookended with a very TNG episode lower deck style conversation at the bar between uh Ortegas, mm. Uhura and Chapel and there's there's one to open the st- the series and there's one to close the series and I think it's partly to get them some s- screen time page <laughs> time whatever you call it in a comic book right. but uh but yeah I was like oh this this seems very very the episode Lower Decks, which I won't say much more because Cam hasn't seen yet, but that's not spoiling anything. It also feels like 
the that last page is where you can pull some hints about what we might expect from season two, episode one. Yes. I think they are hinting at some stuff there that will connect. Yeah, and we won't go like specifically through all of the plot details, <clears throat> right? But we do have some some trek plot details. Okay, so we've got a bit of a Samaritan snare that happens here. <laughs> yep. Um, and then I don't really know what the what the precedent is for the way that they end up kidnapping I, Spock. <laughs> I will say transporter, like transporter tag. I'm amazed. We haven't seen more transporter <laughs> tag. Like, like just, just it's like, this would be really fun in an episode. Or just being like, no, we're going to transport you away. No, we're going to transport you away. And just well, transport wars. Yeah. In disco where like, all you have to do is tap your badge and you've transported like, anywhere right so right like yeah. there should i mean and they did to be to disco's credit they do have a couple scenes where there's a very cool transporter chase um but the that was the thing about this i think that sold me over the pieces that i was like not like super jazzed about right because i was like the the pieces of it feel so star trek like you i could hear the transporters when they would when they would show <laughs> the beam and i could like when the could phasers you, went off, I was like, that looks really good. Like, could you hear the door chime when it went reet, reet, reet? reet yep. Yeah. Reet, <laughs> reet. I had to think about it. And it, as I thought about it more, it was that reet, reet. It's like yeah. the, you know, I, but yeah, onomatopoeias are difficult. I, they're difficult. They're tough. They're very difficult. And it's an art form that I kind of never appreciated. I mean, it's one of those things I, you don't notice till it's done a little poorly, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. I, it took me a moment. I was like, "No, oh, okay, I'll I'll go with that. I buy it." Not just it's better than like, just, just writing like, Jing for everything, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> like TNG is like you know, do 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 do. You know, you, what what are you going to write on page for that? You got several notes to write versus just on, a two note ring. So. Right no, for TNGs, you would write beady boo doop. Yeah, I mean Ooh. that's yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> and a new calling, John, Jesse. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good at naming podcasts and onomatopoeianizing Star Trek sounds. <laughs> I have the, the shortest resume ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you guys feel about how the characters were written? Did you feel they sounded like their characters? Okay, so the only character note that I had was that Pike felt very frustrated to me, which is not something we usually see in Pike. Um, mm -hmm. we, we see a lot of, you know, like, internal wrestling with fate and, like, thinking about outcomes and things like that. But we don't see him frequently, like, not lose his cool, but, like, actually seem like he has no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. And I will say I felt like there are a couple of panels in maybe one or two issues where I was like, he feels a little dumb in the way that, like, yeah. a, mm -hmm. a Kirk has a slight reputation for or, like, a early season Picard might be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um which yeah, I couldn't. About. I couldn't hear like... a lot of his dialogue in Anson Mount's voice. I tried oh. it. And, yeah, and one for it's a comic. There's a lot of exposition y dialogue for sure, and that's part of yeah. it. Oh, there's a lot. But then even <laughs> some of his jokes, I was like, that this isn't this doesn't feel pikey to me. No, it wasn't. It wasn't playful enough. It was like it was like. And now I told a joke, and it's like yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. I would say the the strongest voice the writers nailed was Spock for me. Mm -hmm. I in reading the the internal dialogue he was having with himself um for entire what the first two books mm -hmm. almost entirely um i was well, like okay i can hear ethan Peck him, saying right? this hmm? yeah well, the yeah. third issue is mostly just him isn't it yeah that's true but yeah i, I agree with you a hundred percent and well, i think it's the second issue has his he does the the log and it's basically yeah, his, his interior he, monologue and that yeah. is one of the highlights right. of the series for me is like yeah, Spock's interior monologue as he's like talking. About, yeah. Oh, I, I hope the crew can't tell how emotional I am right now. And of course, conveniently, Ortega's right then. It's like, boy, you're cool, Spock. Yeah. Well, and I so and I would say like, yes, a lot of the dialogue in the in the whole series, excuse me, sounds very exposition expository. Um, mm -hmm. But with Spock, you can kind of just get away with that, yeah, because that's yeah. how he sounds, right? Like yeah. he's he sort of sounds expository. Um, but I agree with you there. I mean, as a as an auditory being, I don't know if how that comes across. Probably weird. But as somebody who lives in the audio sphere uh, frequently, 
I was able to hear all of these voices very clearly to your point, except for Pike, where I was like, this is just, it's a little bit off. Like it feels mm -hmm. to me, like I said, it kind of, it almost feels like Jeffrey Hunter's Pike in yeah, a couple of yeah, spots yeah. where I was like, that's not like somebody saw the cage and went, oh, I know Pike, but I, I don't want to make assumptions <laughs> about the writers because I hate when people do no, that. Yeah. So I'm not going to do that. Um, and I know that these writers know their Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Krista Byers in the writers, like in the writers so my, room for a right. lot of these shows. So, so my guess yeah. is that it was, there were story constraints that they were given and they were like, okay, oh, how yeah. do we make all this fit? Which is sure. generally the, the uh, slack that I'm willing to cut anything that I talk about critically. Now, how frustrating do you Mark's think that point, is sometimes? Like, I it's got to be the worst. And to Mark's point, Pike is yeah. missing his number one, and there's basically nothing he can do about it. So that's definitely part of where that frustration is coming from. Another thing um, you can think of is that this is a horrible day for Pike because it seems like this is starting right where Episode Ten has left off. Like, kind of feels later. like it, yeah. Uh, yeah, because the rest of the crew is just finding out about this, and so like, yeah, he is just coming from this existential crisis of like living his alternate future, and now he has to deal with all of this. Which yeah. is great parallel because then, spoiler alert, um, Spock lives a little bit of an alternate past. Um, again, with the Trek tropes here, it's sort of along the lines of a uh, inner light, except that in this instance, uh, Rock Spock takes a walk and checks out a Prothean pyramid from Mass Effect on the Illyrian homeworld. <laughs> now, my issue with this issue is, I told you I brought a lot of puns, is that <laughs> the, I don't know what the word is here for it. It's it's a little bit of a cop out, I think, to Cameron's point from earlier to go, hey, here's the definitive reason for a thing. And then at the end go, but we're not allowed to talk about it. Yeah. But I really liked the reason that they gave for that. Normally, I would hate it just on principle, but the justification I actually really like for it because it was a well-considered thing and it fits with the rest of continuity of Star Trek as I'm aware of it because again, I have not watched Enterprise. I kind of disagree because they all say, and I disagree that they think they found the key to save Una. I'm like, where? why Why do you guys think this would be a thing? Like, she's, I, yeah, the laws are still the laws, whether yeah. anyway, <laughs> but ignoring that, like they all think like, yeah, we found this great information and then one captain is like, Nah, I don't want to. And you're all like, oh, you're right. Okay, never mind. It's one captain who tried to murder them. <laughs> like, they're not going to care what he thinks. Yeah. Right. But... Yeah, it was, there's no, like, big cultural, like, oh, yeah, it literally is the decision. And, like, hey, how does everybody else feel about this? Right. Also. Can we run this up the flagpole a bit? Yeah. Yeah. Like, how does but your guys' a... political society work? But it's a diaspora, yeah. and they don't have a political society that's unified, and they all have different ways of living in different places, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And we constantly see... <clears throat> to be fair, <clears throat> excuse me, to be fair, we constantly see one captain speak for an entire race in Star Trek. That's a pretty common thing that captains yeah. do in Star Trek. That's true. That's so true. Yeah, that's a good point. It's one of those I'm not things saying where... it's not Star Trek. I'm just right, saying you right. can poke holes in it. Yeah. You absolutely can, just like you could, you can with Star Trek, right? Yes. Yeah. For, uh, again, to illustrate like the soft landing point, right? It's like if you're already there for the star trek of it all it's probably mm -hmm. not gonna bug you i think um now part of this is that it was like really i've been waiting for more than a year and you're giving me four issues of a <laughs> like <laughs> just give me something that yeah. isn't 84 pages of, tiny. of yeah. story like, and it's like, all right <laughs> yeah it, it, it i am looking forward to the day where everything catches back up. I don't even know if regular production schedules for television series are going to become a thing like they used to be when we were growing up. Mm. But I, I, you know, go tiny bit of a soapbox here. I hate split seasons. They piss me off and they mm -hmm. feel lazy on the network's part. It always feels like a cash grab. And I, I, it's frustrating these days to be like, Oh yeah, we shot this thing two years ago, three years ago. And now it's finally coming out. And, um, you know, for uh, they're just it's weird to adapt to the way that television is presented now compared to when we were kids. And well, and yeah. especially when you consider that 
a lot of those studios and those sorts of people are making way more money now on the exact same product. Uh, it starts to become pretty clear why the WGA is like, maybe we should just strike. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, you know, in case it's not super clear, we here at Open Pike Night totally support the WGA. And I, I hope in my heart of hearts that something very good can get worked out because if there is yet another delay in the life cycle of Strange New Worlds, I may not like live you guys like I, <laughs> they've already told me there's going to be a season three and if there's a strike instead of season three and then they still do season three like a year later can you even imagine what would happen to me like i would shrivel and, and die it would be bad but there will be, be here to see every moment of it and yeah i will totally support <laughs> be it because podcast. i understand that it's necessary like there will I'm, be some I'm totally here for that niche episodes of open pike night for a while there <laughs> <laughs> while we wait for that real real specific episode minute by minute oh. menagerie <laughs> <laughs> some other uh very trekian things that happen in this that are fun to poke holes at is uh pike pulls the classic trek captain maneuver of seeing a trap and walking right into it <laughs> oh thank you for alerting me that there's a trap ahura how about we just continue with what we were going to do anyway yeah. And also just the flat out, you know, it's not surprising for Pike, but any captain really just like, no, nah, I don't want to do what I've been ordered to do. I'm going to go okay. do what I want to do. And then maybe we'll get to what we're supposed to do. But it's now, kind of fun to see him kind of wing about it a bit. Whinge, wing. Yeah. Whinge, well, yeah. I've, <laughs> whinge. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen these as sort of, oh, hello to Admiral Funnest Frontier. Welcome to the hey. chat, Admiral. Good to have What's you. Up? Thank you for all you do for all of the podcasting and Star Trek community on Twitter. Follow him at Funnest Frontier on Twitter. Now, my my issue there, or not an issue rather, is that I think that the... Uh, one of the things that I, I, I like about the alien, or rather the Illyrians in this, is that they have that classic TOS uh, almost style feel where they're just sort of snide for no reason. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then they give you like a little aside where it's like, actually, they're snide because humans suck. <laughs> and yeah. the only other time we ran into humans, we were jerks about it. So it's yeah. like the I, I, I will say that, you know, it does have a little bit of that extended universe feel because it's like, go check out this episode, go check out yeah. this episode, which of course it is built to do. Mm -hmm. But I hear you, Cameron, when you say like, come on, don't give me any homework for the thing. I I, yeah. I totally get that. And unfortunately um, with, with you know, the aforementioned damage episode, you can't just watch that episode because that was a season where Enterprise was like, oh, we're going to go full season long story arc like DS9 mm -hmm. did. And right. yeah, if you just take that one out of context, like, wow, that was a <laughs> dick move for no reason. Like, yeah, right. there were reasons. It still doesn't mean it wasn't a but, dick move. Well, yeah. but but and as we were talking about with captains not necessarily going rogue, but kind of like, you know, stretching the limits of their orders, mm -hmm. right? Like, I always see that as like, I'm a star employee. Like, I'm going to really push against all of the policies that my manager has in place or something just to see like how much I can get away with. Right. Yeah. Cause I mean, even when Pike gets reprimanded in this, April is kind of, hey, <laughs> hey, yeah, <laughs> April okay. should not be Pike's admiral because he's <laughs> no. such a pushover. <laughs> he's a huge yeah. pushover. Yeah. In the series and in this la la la. Didn't hear that. La la la. Yeah. <laughs> he seriously is like if I were an admiral and my yeah. child was a captain, like yeah. <laughs> it would be useless. <laughs> I did like in the in the story how Spock, you know, it's like oh, the Illyrian Enigma is mostly about Spock, and mm -hmm. or a, a good chunk of it is about Spock, and and I enjoyed his his point of view and just just getting to see the the some more Vulcan history and Illyrian history and being the one to discover that while also dealing with his issues. And that's, that's part of this series is it is really serialized uh -huh. in the storylines that we actually get to see. It's, it's Spock again, like Cam said, picking immediately up mm -hmm. after what we've already seen in the series. Not, not a whole lot of new stuff, so. that's true, that's but he's got continuity. But he's, yeah. yeah, he's got that emotional rawness from episode nine where he's like, yep. I'm going to let this into my soul and deal with this here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's it comes across even on a static comic book image. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's really, really well done. But yeah, I mean, the just kind of going back to what these extended universe things have to be like, again, why I prefer the little 
uh, sidebar stories is, yes, we get some huge revelations about Vulcans and Illyrians in this comic until any TV or screenwriter decides not to. Like, yes. that's what, like why yeah. would an extended universe writer like make these mm -hmm. things knowing that there's nothing that's going to make anyone because stick you to get it? Because you're getting a chance to work on Star Trek, and the same thing could tell be said a of fun any story. Just tell a fun story. You don't no, have to it, like tell us no. where the Illyrians came from. That's what I'm saying, though, is they were probably told, "Tell us where the they Illyrians came told. from." I yes, I understand. and and the same could be said of any TV writer too, right? Like, why give, why make Eluna an Illyrian? Why make Una an Illyrian <laughs> if somebody else has already established that we don't know much about them? It's like, oh, because I want to be the one to flesh that out. It's like, yeah, you could you could argue for any creative working on a show like this why do this thing because somebody else could change it but i hear <laughs> i hear where you're coming from like just I ask the showrunners of picard and that's all i mean wow <laughs> talk about some thematic uh, uh, i just god cam i can't wait for you to start watching I mean, either apparently Seriously. somehow i haven't been spoiled be yet really but i know <laughs> there's some things are happening i just uh, i've just seen people's reactions Oh, it's it's intense. I okay. I, I did let, yeah. let me talk about some things I did like a lot. I mean, yeah. I, I've talked a little bit, but Ortega's has a great laugh out loud line about sitting in the captain's chair. Yep, loved that moment. And of course, the one amazing panel of uh, some a, a human that looks a lot like Pike walking on the Illyrian homeworld, and then you get this great like EC comic panel of like this dissolving human flesh yes. like classic astronauts <laughs> broken helmet and that's what i'm talking about like that's something they couldn't show on a family friendly tv show like that's no. something perfect for comics and i think wish they had leaned into that ec kind of more retro style a little bit yeah. more with a little bernie writes in like the like the illustrations of the stand style kind of thing mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. man yeah it's like give us a little bit of uh just what pulp Give it, you know, pulp. it is, it's, it is, yeah. it, it, they bring a teeny bit of pulp to this and it's nice to see. Um, teeny turning, bit. turning Spock's skin into rocks is not pulp for you. No, that's... no that was, that was all right. Yeah. That was good. You know, I mean, again, to me, they... that's, that's like a straight video game thing. And I was like, I love this. I am yeah. super here for this. <laughs> Man, Star Trek just like feels people's DNA can just like shift and transform okay. at a moment's notice i'll ask and i'm yeah. asking this to to everybody watching too how is what they did to spock for him mm -hmm. to go to that planet any different than what chapel did when they went down in the in the season one episode one and how is that modified any different? their genetics to right. and how is that any in? different from the illyrians in the first yeah. place at all <laughs> exactly how well, those temporary those were right. temporary and answer. i guess temporary is okay yeah, yeah it sure seems like it because i mean that's chapel's whole career as they established in season one is is genetic stuff it's like but we're scared of it well but, i also love that we yeah. learned that uh I mean, Chapel's a civilian. Maybe she has a lot of downtime to be just uh, randomly uh, researching Illyrian genetics on her own, which we learned she does. But Ahura, a cadet on the flagship, being tossed from position to position, has apparently just taken it upon herself to like study deep into Illyrian history oh, over yeah. the course of the first season. <laughs> well, their language is actually somewhat simple to learn. There's a, uh, uh, if you follow your Killebrand on Twitter, which you should do at Gah Yogi, maybe at yep. Gah Yogi one. I'm not sure. I think it's just Gah Yogi. Uh, we'll edit this in post-production. Uh, he did point out there's like a whole, like when they first put up that display at the Paley Center in New York around the premiere, there was mm. one of those Illyrian scrolls and there's like, it's a direct uh, substitution cipher. So it's actually not super difficult to learn that language. Now, I doubt that that's the canon reason that Uhura was able to do it to Cameron's point, but just, you know, I figured if I'm going to be a nitpicky tricky, I ought to do that at all times. <laughs> okay. I like Mark's uh, pull up Mark's uh, comment because I think that's the canon reason is she just doesn't like her roommates. So she just hides away in her bed. And it's like, I don't, I have nothing <laughs> else to do right now. Yeah. There we go. These guys are being bozos out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I like your I like the uh, pitch dark sleep pod because <laughs> it's like, there's a lot of light in that sleep pod, <laughs> it, even now, in the deleted scene. Yeah. Now, I will ask, do you guys feel that you have any grasp on how they're going to get Una out of mm. uh, of jail? Because well, I, totally I definitely <laughs> I mean, I definitely feel like they're setting it up so they're going to be on shore leave. And then these three, Ahura, Chapel, and Ortegas, are going to stay on the Enterprise, and they've got a plan, which feels a lot like the Lower Decks 
pilot or uh, season yep. premiere when they were saving Captain Freeman. So I, I don't know what's going on there. And then they found out that uh, they weren't saving Captain Freeman. Somebody else was doing it, and they were the right. deckers. <laughs> Here, they're actually probably going to save Una themselves, but that's yeah, the difference between the shows. Kelly says blackmail. Who's blackmail. getting blackmailed, <laughs> Kelly? <laughs> Who's getting blackmailed? And over what? Hmm. Does does Pike have something on April? I don't know. I, and was April involved? Does somebody have something on Battelle? Do we know? Um, Probably. She, I apparently mean, the Illyrians have something on all of them because there's just Illyrian spies throughout the Federation we hear, which right? feels like more damning information on Nuna than anything else. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of people in human form in the Federation passing as human. You know, that's kind of a weird plot point, and I bet you that never comes up in any Star Trek. Ever. ever. Nope. Nope. That would never, never uh, be a thing again. Wouldn't yeah. make sense because it had already been used. So. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and I would put it past i just i know star trek writers aren't going to use plots that just got used twice in quick succession so yeah certainly not in the same calendar year or tv season they what wouldn't do that about? even if the medium were slightly different say animation right. i don't know yeah. <laughs> hi jenny welcome to the show thank you for being here in the chat with us i hey, hey. am happy to have you here yeah um, welcome <clears throat> really quickly <laughs> clear my throat there kelly um, John, do you have any predictions about how Uno will get out? Uh, do you think it'll be blackmail? Do you think it'll be... I think, I think it'll be, I think it'll be as like the, you know, the agency needs you. I think it'll be something where Illyria, there will be some issue it's that comes good. up where they'll only talk to an Illyrian and they only mm -hmm. know one Illyrian and they're going to, you know, it's like they're calling you back to service, you know, um, It'll be it'll be like the end of of what was it Sherlock season three like oh we're shipping you off to exile all right you, I hope you learned your lesson we need you back so <laughs> How I, is I think that's probably a pretty likely way they're gonna do it I know Jesse's okay. got his theory and I I think it's a very good theory Jesse so I'll let you finish with that so I'll just say my real my guess then is that they're gonna find a way to reverse her genetic modifications the chapel and her have been studying chapel's got all this DNA stuff we learned in these comics. They're going to find a way to reverse her her mm. condition. So you're saying they're going to take a character who's notably for the entire time that we've been aware of them, not human, and just suddenly make them human? That also wouldn't fit into Star Trek anywhere. anywhere not I really, think. but especially no, no, that's, that's my very bad guess. I'm not saying I'm going to enjoy it when they do it, but, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, if she's like 120 years old and we get like a Raiders of the Lost Ark aging, you know, <laughs> not right. Sorry. I could face melting that. off. Yeah. Yes. The medicine um, Chapel gives her is in a, a very uh, yeah. a carpenter like cup. In, yeah. Even. You can only take this medicine from a chalice in a large dose. That's right. Um, uh, Mark says, I'll be a little, I'll admit to being a little bit disappointed if it wraps up by a we need you quickly. Um, we'll call yeah. that the JAG resolution. Um, <laughs> I think I will call mine the uh, measure of an Illyrian man style illusion. I, <clears throat> I, I've, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been doing a little bit of reading and uh, showrunner Henry Alonzo Myers, who has been here before, you should go listen to that episode. It's called Future Man. Um, mentioned that the episode in season two dealing with Una feels like a classic Trek episode. And he you know, talks a lot about how it really draws from the DNA of Trek. So I'm just hearing Measure of a Man style episode, which is a full on, you know, to mention Jag again, court martial style episode. You've mm -hmm. got a judge, you've got an advocate. There's probably a general somewhere. Uh, <laughs> but if they if they stick with the structure that we're used to that Picard laid down in Measure of a Man, then that would have Pike defending Una. Great, mm -hmm. we love this. And it would have his acting number one, who I'm pretty sure would be La'an and has been La'an in the past when Una's not available arguing against her which i think would be yeah. Yeah. which i think would be i think that would work thematically right because then inevitably laan is going to learn something about her own self-worth and how just mm -hmm. because she's an augment monsta doesn't mean that she's bad but i i, I, I think I, you're mostly I it's just coming from me craving this lawyer episode really <laughs> i think you're really onto something there i think it is going to be a courtroom drama we haven't had that Star strange new worlds episode yet right and i know that they like to kind of you know bring up back these classic uh, uh formats i think though laon is gonna 
defend Una. I think Una's going to ask for her, and that's why they bring Laan back. That's why she comes Ooh. back ah. to help. And that that's because she doesn't like augments, and that so you got to put her into the position where she has to defend them, even though she doesn't like them. So but I don't know who... who's going to prosecute. Yeah, though. someone. Ortegas. I'm just saying Ortegas. Oh. Yeah, because <laughs> Ortegas because she's got a little bit of xenophobia in the future. That's right. Um, mm. oh, Ensign Chalamet. Because that would be funny. Cyborg. Oh, Ensign Chalamet. Yeah, because he's yeah. we know he's a racist. That's yep. right. Um, but I don't think they. I don't think they would go. Who's the most likely to hate her? Let's have that person <laughs> prosecuted. No, he's just the person who volunteered first. Now, to be fair, they did sort of do that to Data, but they didn't do it on purpose. Oh, hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> Newest on the ship. Oh, Pelia. Like, oh, right. yeah. It's like It'll uh, be she was she yeah. was a lawyer in her first assignment, but then she went back to engineering school. <laughs> but now so. I'm an engineer because I yeah, thought it would now be I'm fun. just a simple engineer. <laughs> but, you know, I'm assuming she has a southern accent for the whole yeah. season yeah. for some reason. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, but can you I? Know, in Carol Kane. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about Carol Kane. I'm so happy. <laughs> what about wow? Her? I just ooh. Kirk would be good. Kirk mm. would be I the only thing that I wouldn't I personally wouldn't go for on that is that it's like you're now you're and again it's totally fine to do this especially considering the the spot that Strange New Worlds occupies in continuity etc. But now you're just inventing a dynamic that yeah. like we don't super need like no. we've got a captain that you know we can hang out with that we love like let's give him some more screen time. Let's give Bruce Horak some screen time. Maybe that's yeah. who he is in season two. He shows up as the Starfleet version of a public defender. Yeah. All in some kind of makeup. Oh, yep. this could be. Oh, Kelly makes a good point. Which Kirk? Sam Kirk uh, was there. I that's totally right. I forgot was, about him. I was thinking James. <laughs> Sam. I mean, I'd watch it. He's tougher yeah, than I he would looks. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, remember, Kirk does pick Una as his number one, too. Potentially. So, for an episode, oh no, no, I guess that was all Pike. She was never, yeah, she was never in. Oh damn, okay. Whoops. Oh, uh, Mark wow. makes a good point. What if it's Kirk Cameron? Oh, then Una's gonna lose. <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> R.I.P. Una. <laughs> um, but I would still watch the hell out of that episode personally. <laughs> If we can get Candace Cameron to defend Una, mm -hmm. I would watch that episode as well. Um, but then we'd have to make like all kinds of full house jokes. And then, you know, when they hit the gavel, they'd have to say, have mercy. And it, it would only work for like eight people. So um, James Cameron, well, he's just got a pocket full James of time Cameron, crystals. There, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think he's busy, right? <laughs> I'll be down at the bottom of the ocean or something. Yeah, he should, be, he should be free. James Cameron's heart is a deep ocean of secrets. That's a good point. Um, well, I think that's about all the notes that I have, you guys, as far as things that I can get away with out spoiling, like the entire, mm. you know, every every plot point. Um, I will say, I am the kind of person that, as I said before, I always want more Star Trek, and I feel like this is maybe one of the avenues that I have personally neglected as a Star Trek fan, because I know there are other ongoing Star Trek comics and they're really well reviewed. So that might be something that I need to check out. And that's kind of making me hope that you do send that copy of the high country soon, John, because I will send it. Yeah. <laughs> I also, because I want to be able to interact with uh, our listener and good friend and supporter, Peter's show, the Trek book club. And that's like one of the smartest sounding podcasts I've ever heard in my life. And I would love to be able to not sound like some kind of Luddite when I <laughs> attempt to participate <laughs> in their chats. So I am going to make an effort as a Star Trek fan to expand my horizons a little bit more into the graphic novel slash comic book slash actual grown up book world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The high country from what you've said sounds like the exact kind of, uh, there we go. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, extended universe story. I enjoy Yes, yeah, it, it is, and I will. I will get to the post office, and I will send it. So, <laughs> I've been traveling yeah, a feel... lot as of late. So, <laughs> apologize, sure. apologies for all that. But... Yeah, I feel the Illyrian Enigma as the first Strange New Worlds comics. Uh, I mean, it feels a little bit more like an advertisement for season two than uh, a comic series in its own right. I expect that we're going to get some mm -hmm. very fun uh stories coming up with writers with uh stories that they really want to tell and, and and ideas and i i do dig the retro kind of uh uh 
aesthetic and and, and drawings in it. Um, yeah. So I think I think they could be a really fun uh, comic series going forward. Yeah, I, I hope they do that. continue it. I hope they continue doing Strange New Worlds comics in in some form or fashion. Hopefully, separate stories, not just season tie-ins or episode tie-ins, things like mm-hmm. that. Because that is, it is a like we talked about a big constraint. And it's like, yeah, just tell an original story. It's okay. Um, <laughs> but I think they also, I mean, who knows? Maybe it was partly they knew how much time was going to have passed between season one, and season two, 13 months. It's, you know, used, it used to be four months. It, it used to be four months between yep. seasons. And now we wait over a year, sometimes two years for TV seasons. So it's probably probably them trying to keep up the the pace of production and, and knowing that there's just a lot of Trek happening mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Now, I mean, if you take all the series as one, like that's about that's more episodes of Trek than you would have gotten exactly early 90s so yeah yeah we're we're coming up on a thousand total folks now to john's point about the pace to john's point about the pace of production uh that for us is about to increase because when strange new worlds gets here you're gonna have like two or three days to watch the episode get your thoughts together call into our show and then listen to us because it, the turnaround is quick during the season, right? It gets released on a Thursday. We come out the next Tuesday. Yep. So doing the math for quality assurance and time spent doing the things, you've got about two days, maybe three days to get your voice heard on Open Pike Night, but we want you to be ready to do that. So the yeah. easiest way for you to do that is to just go to openpike.com and click on all the links. Some of them say join us. Some of us say newsletter. Some of them say all kinds of stuff. Just click on them all. See what they all do. But make sure you click on the newsletter one so that you can get subscribed. That gets you alerts directly to your email inbox about what's going on with us. As John mentioned earlier, if you go to patreon.com slash open pike and sign up at any tier, including the $2 tier, you will be entered to win the aforementioned signed apron. It has been touched by Captain Pike and Mr. Spock. And we're about halfway to halfway, the 50 patron. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, yep. Just, just a huge there. thank you, first of all, to everybody who has already become a patron. And thank you to all of you out there considering it. We have recently uh, refreshed everything. Everything is now connected. So as soon as you sign up as a patron, you get immediate access to our patron Discord channel. You will be able to chat with us directly there. You can get access to all the videos and the contest, etc. There's a lot going on at openpike.com, and you're going to want to be aware of all of it as Strange New Worlds gets going. That having been said, I've got one last thing, guys, and then I'll let you go. This is the last week of Star Trek Picard Season 3. That gives us pretty good reason to hope for a trailer for Strange New World Season 2. Maybe Thursday, maybe Friday. Yep. Maybe like midnight on Friday. So they're, they're, or maybe midnight Thursday morning, right? So keep your eyes on social media, Twitter specifically, at Open Pike for me to be flipping out and calling for your reactions to the trailer because there will be a special episode of open pike night to react to that trailer of course as there was last year go check that out we actually predicted some stuff that came true and i'm kind of kind of stoked for us because if you listen to it and then listen to this you will hear how far we've come and of course we couldn't do any of that without you the live viewers and the listeners out there in the audience thank you so much for continuing to listen and download every week as you do we couldn't do this without you Absolutely. And uh, I will say for the regular season episodes, get your clips in by Saturday. You have you have until the end of the day, Saturday, we'll be recording on Sundays. So just when you have thoughts right after you watch the episode, open up the the openpike.com slash join us or open up your recording app and just send us a voice memo. And uh, yeah, we'd love to hear uh, you know, old returning voices, new voices. We want as many voices as possible to include in our episodes. So. And actually, to that point, before we get out of here, guys, let's go ahead and play the one submission we did get for this week that we all totally spaced until yes, right now. Yes, we did. We uh, <laughs> Thank you for saying that, Jesse. Yeah, good job, we, Jesse. we had a new caller this week. Let's hear from him. 
Captain Idol from Trek Time here, long-time listener, first-time subspace communicator. This series was ultimately disappointing, setting us up to be hyped over finding out something about the mysterious Una between the, between the two series. However, it took us on a bit of a bizarre journey, including Spock turning to stone and uh, many outrageous transporter abductions. It did add some detail with the variants of Illyrians, but if you came for the actual enigma, be prepared to be left disappointed. And to top it off, Una doesn't even appear in the series at all. Massive mischance to capitalise on the stunning image of Rebecca Romain. Anywho, I look forward to forgetting I recorded this, driving home in my car and nearly crashing at the shock of my own voice coming out of the radio. Live long and prosper. <laughs> I will insert oh, wow. some uh, horn honking sounds right there at the end of that. <laughs> Welcome to the Open Bike Night stage. Thank you yeah. for calling in and letting us, you know, giving your, your thoughts on the Illyrian Enigma. And we hope to hear from you again. And... and as Can always, say, new callers. Let me say, go for let me it. Say. I, I hmm? just had to say, I love your energy and your your punnery. That was your, yes. your oh, yeah. rhyming is uh, just uh, gorgeous. Apologies, I didn't mean to interrupt, John. <laughs> oh, you're good. No, we love we love having new callers. We love our old callers. We love all of our callers, all of our supporters, and of course, all of our listeners. Without you, there is no open pike night. So, thank you all for being here with us tonight. Uh, if you want to catch up with Jesse or Cam, Cam, where can folks catch up with more of you? Yeah, you can catch up with me now watching DS9, as you said, as well as uh, TNG over at Green Shirt and Newbies Trek Through the Next Generation. Find it wherever you're listening to this podcast for as much longer as you were probably still around for another couple of years with all of the Picard to tackle after we're done with TNG. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For at least two more years, I'd say. At least two more years. Jesse, how about you? Okay, one last guess for section 31. I think Giorgio is going to find a way to travel through the mycelial network despite her sudden onset scoliosis while dodging space pirates in a cloaked ship. And they'll call it Crouching Tardigrade Hidden Drukmani. You're welcome. <laughs> if for whatever reason after that you're still willing to listen to me, just stay in this podcasting app and look up Sudden But Inevitable. That's the podcast where I get longtime friends to become brand new fans of the shows I feel they probably should have seen by now. Shows like Firefly, Cowboy Bebop, movies like Highlander, Donnie Darko. There's a lot of stuff that people that I know haven't seen, and hearing them experiencing it for the first time through my watchful eye, yeah, let's call it that, can be a lot of fun. So go check it out, Sudden But Inevitable. I just want to say thank you, Kelly, for saying thank you, Open Pike, for a great podcast and fantastic tweets. Really appreciate your handwork. Thank you, Kelly. Peter says thank you, Open Pike Night, for hosting this se session. You got me to finish reading the comic series. So, hey, we're we're all about that. We're all about more people enjoying more Trek. And uh, we appreciate all of you joining us tonight, everybody listening. And uh, we just hope you have a fantastic, what, seven, eight, nine weeks until uh, the premiere oh of season two goodness. of Strange New Worlds. So until then, you can go anywhere you want, but you can't stay here. <laughs>